Lewandowski's Bayern future, Arsenal make outrageous bid, City plan to stick together, Wonder Kid agrees MLS move, and a transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers, and this is the Daily News. First off, and just before we get started, loads of you have been asking what about all the t-shirts and clothes that I've been wearing, including this one, and they are from the latest drop on the One Football store inspired by the Olympics in Japan. They also involve this cool t-shirt as well. The latest One Football drop is celebrating the hosting country of the 2020 Olympics. All of the clothes are produced in Europe with sustainable and recycled materials, and there is free shipping to those of you in Europe as well. To check out all of the latest clothes in the drop, make sure you click the link below to check out the One Football store. Right then, moving on to the first piece of news, and we have Robert Lewandowski's future at Bayern Munich, and the future is he will stay with the club. Of course he will. There is no way that they're going to let one of, if not the best striker in the world, leave their club. Despite the fact he's 32 years old, he's coming into his prime. I reckon Lewandowski might even score more than he did last season, next season. Anyway, the reason that President Herbert Heiner has been forced to talk about this is because there have been quite a few rumours that Thomas Tuchel wants to bring him into Chelsea. It's no secret that Chelsea are looking for a top striker and Lewandowski definitely fits the bill, but he's not leaving. Herbert Heiner said that they have Lewandowski for at least the next two seasons at the club and then after that they'll start to think about a successor. This ties in with the fact that Erling Haaland's future at Dortmund has been the cause of some speculation, but it doesn't look like Bayern are going to go through all the effort, all the time and all the money to bring the Norwegian into the club because they're perfectly happy with Lewandowski. I'm sorry, Chelsea fans, a bit of bad news for you. Although, having said that, there are some other options on the market, five of which I let you know right here. <clears throat> Almost messed that up. Let you know right here in this video where I discuss five potential options for Chelsea striker. Now, now along with this as well, Lewandowski hasn't even said that he would like to leave the club anyway, so it looks like it's just a whole load of fabrication and the Polish striker is more than happy banging in the goals at the Allianz Arena around Germany and around Europe, of course, as well. And on top of this, Herbert Heiner also dropped a few lines on some upcoming contract talks for Leon Goretzka, who's only got 12 months left on his deal and has been linked with a free transfer move to Manchester United, and Joshua Kimmich as well. If there's anyone who's going to sign a new deal at Bayern, it's Joshua Kimmich. The guy just screams Bayern Munich in German football. Right, moving on then, and to, well, a bit of an outrageous bid from Arsenal when it comes to signing Lautaro Martinez. Yes, you heard me right, Lautaro Martinez. The Inter Milan forward, and well, Arsenal seem to have heard about this whole Inter Milan needing to sell some players to bring in a bit of money a little bit too late. Like when they first announced this earlier on in the summer, PSG were quick to act. 60 million euros, Ashraf Hakimi, thank you very much. And now Inter have got a bit of money, they might not necessarily need to sell some of their players so badly. Still, Arsenal apparently going to go in with an offer of a Lautaro Martinez that does not reach the £75 million that Inter Milan apparently want for the Argentinian striker, but does involve around £35 million with Hector Bellerin involved as well. The Spanish right back has seemed to have run his course at the North London club and has said he wants a new challenge. Like I mentioned, Inter Milan sold Ashraf Hakimi, so they need another right wing back. That part of the deal actually fits, even if it's just a loan deal. The part that doesn't fit is Lautaro Martinez joining Mikel Arteta's side. I have no doubt that he'd be a fantastic player for Arsenal. There's just no way he's leaving the champions of Italy. He's going to play in the Champions League next season to not even play in any European football at the Emirates and maybe not even be in with a realistic chance of getting back into it next season. Next up then, and to Manchester City. And although we're used to them making big moves in the transfer market this summer, it looks as though they're looking within their own squad and tying players down for the foreseeable future. One of those is goalkeeper Edison. Since he joined the club in 2017, he's been an absolute revelation. A stunning goalkeeper. And his new contract is going to add three years on to his existing deal, which runs until 2025. So his contract will run until 2028. If he manages to make it all the way through to the end of the 2027-2028 season, he would have been at the club for 11 years and presumably added a whole load more trophies and medals to his personal trophy cabinet. It'll be just before his 35th birthday and... If he manages to do that, he'll probably go down as one of the greatest goalkeepers in Premier League history ever. Anyway, alongside this, Manchester City are also looking to tie down some of their other stars, including Phil Foden, including John Stones, and including Riyad Mahrez and Raheem Sterling. Those two are quite interesting because they were both linked as part of this huge deal that could potentially see Harry Kane join the club. There was rumours that if they couldn't stump up all the money that Daniel Levy and Tottenham wanted for Kane, they were going to offer 100, 110 million and throw in a couple of players in return. The names of Mahrez and Sterling were mentioned. 
they're not going to join Tottenham. None of them are leaving Manchester City for Spurs, and I think that they're probably going to be signing a new contract. Both of them are very, very vital to the way that Pep Guardiola plays. They've played under him for so many years now, and they're so good for Manchester City, I can see them all, all of them, all the names I mentioned, signing new long-term deals before Manchester City go into the transfer market and make any big moves. Next up then, and we've got an Argentinian wonder kid joining the MLS ahead of a move to Europe, and that is Thiago Almada. Many of you may know him from FIFA and Football Manager, because if you play them like I do, you'll know he's just a wonder kid in every sense of the word. On the games, in real life, he's just brilliant. Anyway, there were reports that he was going to be moving to Marseille because they wanted to build a team around the Argentinian, but... It doesn't look like that is going to happen. Instead, he's going to be moving from Velez Sarsfeld in his home country to Atlanta in the MLS. $15 million to move to Atlanta. And well, this is going to be quite a good deal for him and quite a good deal for the MLS in general, attracting some really big stars away from Europe and to the continent. As to when the deal will actually go through, well, he's going to have to return from the Olympics after Argentina were knocked out after a one-all draw with Spain. Uh, well, let's just say Brazil were rather happy about that. Richarlison and his teammates managed to win last night, meaning they go through in the group and Germany were knocked out. And after the game, Aston Villa midfielder Douglas Ruiz posted on his Instagram, goodbye, little brothers, in reference to the Argentinian team going home. Oh, talk about stoking a fire. To be fair, Argentina could turn around and say, we won the Copa America in your backyard, so I'm not so sure Douglas Ruiz and the Brazilian team should be speaking just yet. However, they are with a very good chance, of course, of taking home the Olympic gold medal after making it through to the next round. Elsewhere in the Olympic football, Japan beat France 4-0. I didn't watch the game. I don't follow much Olympic stuff. But yeah, I'm not quite sure how that one happened. Anyway, if anyone did watch the game, especially French fans, leave us a quick match report in the comment section down below. Lastly then, we come to a quick roundup of the rest of the day's news and transfer news that you might have missed. And Aston Villa's bid for Leon Bailey and raising some funds for him all hinges on whether or not they can sell Anwar El Ghazi, who's been linked with a move to Roma. Sky Sports understand that James Madison's price tag for Arsenal or anyone else who's interested from Leicester is set to over £70 million. Elsewhere and Celtic have, well, they've let themselves down again. For the fourth year in a row, they will not be playing Champions League group stage football because they've been knocked out in the qualifiers. This time, 3-2 on aggregate to FC Midtjylland of Denmark. And lastly, but not least, if you're a football fan or just a fan of goals in general, check out Andreas Pereira's goal for Manchester United in the friendly against Brentford. I don't care if it's a friendly. I don't care if he's not that good player overall. If you love football, you're going to love watching this goal because he hits the most ridiculous volley in off the underside of the bar. And yeah, it was just absolutely spectacular. So make sure you check that out. That's all from me then for today. Check out everything else we've got going on in on OneFootball. And until next time, I will see you guys later.